So in this video, I'm gonna go over the pretty subjective art and the intention behind worship video directing. So to start out, one of the most important things that you kinda of need to be aware of is camera callouts. So being able to properly call out a camera on the intercom or the headset, whatever you're using, is pretty vital so your camera operators know when they're live and when they're not. The best way that I've found is just to say, ready camera one, and go camera one. Now this camera call out fashion is pretty well known, but there are a lot of variations of it that will still help you be able to accurately call out cameras and give more information to your camera operators. So for example, while I'm switching worship, if I were to say ready camera one, go camera one, ready camera two, go camera two, ready camera three, go camera three, now if the pacing of your switching is picking up and you're needing to call out cameras even faster than you are, simply saying three, three, one, one is another good method for being able to call out your cameras even faster than saying ready camera one, go camera one. So the next thing that is a little specific to our switcher is just to be able to switch cameras. So for example, right now camera one is live in program view. Camera two is in preview view, and then we just wanna use all of our transitions situated over here on the switcher to be able to switch camera one and camera two. So if I just wanna switch these two, I'll just hit cut. Now you can see that camera one has switched places with camera two. So now camera two is live. So for example, if I wanted to use this in a worship environment, I would just say ready camera one, go camera one, and I'll just cut to camera one. And then if, and if I wanted to switch to camera three, I just queue up camera three, say ready camera three, and then go camera three, I just cut to that, and then again, they just switch back and forth. Another option to that is a fade. So we have two options of fading. We have our auto button or our fade bar right here, and that allows us to just fade back and forth at any given speed, whatever we wanna do. Now the auto button is able to be set in the settings of our switcher, but right now it's just set to a one second fade. So if I hit that, it'll do essentially the same thing as this manual bar is doing, but just for one second. Now we use cut probably 95% of the time when we're switching during a whole Sunday service. The only time I really use auto is when we're transitioning between some pretty key elements like going from worship to the message or if we're going from the message to our closeout and we're putting up some pre-service slides or post-service slides. That's pretty much the only reason I would use a fade. Generally in worship, you can use a fade if you're doing a really slower song, but I like to just keep it simple and stick with cuts during worship and during the message. So the third thing that I wanna go over is kind of what shots you're looking for when you're switching cameras because knowing how to actually switch cameras is really only half if that of the switcher or producer role in a church setting. So being able to know which shot you're actually looking for and what you want to see at what points in the song as well as the sermon is pretty key to being a good producer. Now again this is really subjective but I have found that running a camera gives you a great experience on the other side of your director role and that way you can really see what the camera operators are experiencing when you're calling them out and when you're directing and switching between those cameras. In a similar fashion a camera operator can also get some great experience by coming back behind the switcher and directing and that way they can really see what it looks like whenever they're switching to their camera and that gives them a better idea of what you wanna see when and what the director's looking for when they're switching to their camera. Now with that said, there are a few things that you may run into while directing cameras or switching that may be a little bit of a distraction, especially during worship. Number one would be a jump cut. Now a jump cut is really just switching between two cameras that have a very similar angle and that creates just kind of a jarring, quick back and forth motion that really is a little distracting and can kind of take people out of the experience of a worship set. One of those solutions comes more in the planning phase of the production process. So situating your camera operators in different areas of the room, for example, having one stay on stage left and one stay on stage right is gonna really help them differentiate their shots between the other camera operators. However, even with some of that planning set up, there is still a possibility that some of the shots will look similar. So I'll typically just be aware while I'm switching or directing and call out to my camera operators and just say, hey, you have the same shot as camera two, can you give me something else? And they're usually pretty easy to grab another shot quickly. Something else that I like to do is use a wide shot at the beginning of our service or at the beginning of a worship set. That just helps to establish the room and it really just takes some knowledge as a director of where you're at in the service and where your camera operators are at. So I'll usually tell camera one to give me a wide shot of the room at the beginning of the worship set, even straight out of the countdown. And that really helps establish the room. 
The last thing that's worth mentioning is pacing. Now pacing is what I've really seen set a good video director apart from a great one. So knowing when your songs are gonna pick up or slow down, knowing your camera operators and knowing they're able to get some slower shots for the slower parts of the song and some faster shots and faster movements for the quicker parts of the song really helps you create an online worship experience that's more engaging by picking up the pace and switching cameras faster when the song picks up. As I'm sure you can imagine, there's a lot more ways and a lot more opportunity, especially in this position, to create a more engaging online worship experience. But hopefully this video just gave you some pretty basic tips and pointers to be able to draw people into an engaging online video for your church.